chapter 6 is the starting here. And um, in chapter 6, it's all factoring. And factoring means we're going to take all of those things we did in 5.5 and 5.6, and we're going to take them and we're going to reverse them and we're going to bring them back to what they happen to have been in um, that chapter. And so there's a little bit of stuff we got to end up doing with some of this values. Um, one of the things is we need to be aware of the greatest common factor or it's the smallest number, or I should say the largest number, sorry, largest number that divides into all values given. So if I had 15 and 25, are my numbers that I'm looking at. What number, if you look at these two, that will go into 15 that would also go into 25? 5. Mm -hmm. And that one's pretty easy because they both end in 5's and so its greatest common factor is 5. So we get 5 out of this one because each of those 5 will go into evenly. And how I know that is if I take 15 and break it to its prime factorization of 3 times 5, and 25 and break it down to its prime factorization of 5 times 5, 15 is 3 times 5, 25 is 5 times 5, five. I'm going to end up going through and circling the things they have in common. The 3 is not in common to 25, so I don't want to circle it. This 5 is in common to both, so it's got to be in both, so that's where I get the greatest common factor is 5. Now in most of these, you should be able to look at them and figure out what your greatest common factor would be. If you had um, 36 and 60, for instance, what number will go into 36 that also goes into 60? What was that? I heard, I think, a 2. Was that what you said, Amy? Did you say 2? A 6. A 6? Okay, we got a 6 now. Is there anything bigger than a 6? I put anything else bigger than 6 into 36 and 60. All of these are, are numbers that go into them, so we've got everything that's going in there, so we're doing wow. good there. 12? Okay. So you're looking at 12 to go in there. 36 and 60. So greatest common factor happens to be 12. Even though we pick 2 and we pick 6, they are numbers that will go into it, but it's just not the largest number that goes into it. So we're kind of on the right track. We're at least getting started on what we need to do with those. And so we get our 12 to come out of there. And again, it's just looking at them and knowing what happens in those. Or if I take 36 and break it down to its prime factorization, And if I break 60 down to its prime factorization, and I write all these things underneath my stuff here for 60, 60 has two twos, it has one three, and it has a five, and lining them up based on what I have. If I've got common things, then those are the stuff that I can circle. The 3 and the 5 don't have anything in common, so what's 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12, okay, to get my greatest common factor. Right, so you wouldn't just put 2 squared? No, because you want to know what it is. You want to know that it's 12. You don't want to know what it's, you don't want to know what its prime factorization is, 2 squared times 3. You want to know what that equals. And so it comes out to be 12, because you're looking for the largest thing that goes into it. Okay. Okay? I'm yeah. Getting you're getting, yeah, you're getting some other stuff um, mixed in there um, with that. So, factor. Oh, denominator? Yes, because then you're looking at the denominator as opposed to just the numerator. But it's the same 
Yeah. Same thing. Mm -hmm. so yep. Same kind of thing. Taking all of them and adding them up to get your biggest number. All the time. Not adding. Number. You're right. multiplying. So two times two times three. But only one of them are you multiplying. Mm -hmm. So you can go into your calculator and just. Yeah. Three. You can go in your into your calculator. Yeah, show me how to do that. If you go to your calculator and whoops, let me get this out of here. If you go to your calculator, you go to math, but you go over to number at the top, and you go down. There's your LCM. Go down one more. There's your greatest common factor. Okay. So then if you hit enter, isn't it called, isn't it called like the greatest common denominator? Denominator, this one is, but okay. it's the same thing. Same thing. It's the same absolutely. thing. Yep. Now how you enter these in is you can only do two at a time. You cannot do three. So if I wanted to know with my 30 and 60, I would put 36 with a comma between it and a 60. Close it in a parenthesis. Hit enter, and it will give me my greatest common factor of those of 12. So okay. What, what if you have three? If you had a third, then you would use this that you just found, this 12, as one of the ones, and then you'd put your third number in, in connection with that. Okay. So, so let's do one that has three. Yeah. Um, so if I had, um, I just had one here that had three. 30, 45, and 75. Yep, you do the first two. So we're going to go math, over to number, down to 9, hit enter. So do 30, comma, 45, parenthesis, <coughs> hit enter. And I don't know if I can get it where you can see it. I get 15. So now I'm going to go math again, over to number down to 9, okay, greatest common factor, but this time I'm going to use 15 and my third number, and what was my third? 75. Whoops, I get my comma in there. Close it in a parenthesis, hit enter, and it will be 15. Okay. So the greatest common denominator is 15. Is the same, yep. Okay, well, what if you don't get 15 for those? If you would, if it came out to be 1, let's say you put all this in and that instead of being 15 in here, it came out to be 1, then that would mean you don't, you have only 1 as your greatest common factor, that there is no connection between the first two numbers and so the third. either it's going to be 1 or it's going to match the It's going to match, well, it not always, it might, it might be lowered. I mean, this might only be 3 instead of 15 when you get all done. Because happens? only three might be in common. That would still be your greatest common factor. Okay, would so be you go by the second one. Yes, yes. You if you've got three. Mm -hmm. okay, so if you only have two, you go by the first one only. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if you've got three of them, you got to do two at a time and then get your other one. Because if I were to go back and look at these without my calculator, 30 is made up of, if I do 30 up here and get prime factorization, is made up of 3 times 10, and 10 is made up of 2 times 5. So 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. 45 is 5 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So 45 is 3 times 3 times 5. And 75 is 3 times 25 and 25 is 5 times 5, so 75 <laughs> is 3 times 5 times 5. So then if I look at my columns, like we did without the calculator, 2's, I can't circle any 2's, I can circle a 3 because there's 1's in every one of those, and I can circle a 5 because it's in every one of them, and so I know that my greatest common factor is 15. All right, this okay. Is so yep. It's 15. Now, your calculator will do numbers, but your calculator will not do greatest common factors with letters in them. And these things do get into having um, letter values. So, so you might have um, 
25 x to the third y to the third along with um, 75 x to the fourth y squared. That might be my two values that I need to find a greatest common factor for. So if that's what I have to find my greatest common factor for, I'm going to look at my numbers, 25 and 75. What's the greatest common factor between 25 and 75? Nope. It's bigger than 5. Because what do you know about 25 and 75? So it's 25, yep. It's my greatest common factor numerically. Now when you look at variables, the greatest common factor is the variable with the smallest exponent. So I have x to the third and x to the fourth. What's my smallest one? X to the third. Mm -hmm. So it's always going to be the smallest one. Always going to be the smallest when you're looking at variables. And it's going to be wider than the second. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because y cubed one. and y squared, 2 is smaller than 3. Mm -hmm. So it gets y squared. will be what I have with that one. Wow. Oh, okay. this one's kind of a good one here. This one. So what about this one? 18xy. 54 xy and 90. <clears throat> now remember the factor has to be part of every one up here. Okay, So I'm going to look for my greatest common factor between 18, 54, and 90. So grab your calculator if you want to figure it out that way. And let me know what it's going to be. Yep. Because you don't have a graphing calculator, right? It's, it's from like the 1800s. It's my own one. So it should have it on it somewhere, but I don't know where it goes. It only goes to so far. Like it's, it's an update. Okay, 18. What the hell? 18 is greatest common factor? Yes or no? It's not because he's still the variables. Oh, okay. What about my variables? I have x, x, and no x. So what's so my smallest amount of x's? It would be 18 because 90 yep. doesn't update. Okay. And I have y, y, and no y. So my smallest amount of y's are? No wise. Okay, I just did okay. one that had so your greatest common factor is just 18. So you don't have other stuff in there. How about this one? How about if you have 3xy squared, 15x squared y squared, and 9x squared y to the third? How about that one? What's coming out of it? Three fifteen and nine. That's kind of easy even to look at. What number is in common between three fifteen and nine? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. So my numerical part is going to be three. What about my variable part? X. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that would be my greatest common factor. Okay. okay. This is so my much greatest common factor. <laughs> 
the last time I tried to. It would be what it would be, okay? Um, because one more. The last time I was taught to do this, we had to work all the way down to the variables. 21x squared y, um, comma, 105x cubed y squared. What's that one? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, so that's that part. What about the variables? So it would be x squared y. Yes. Yep. X squared y. We have a cap at that one. All right. That is all the stuff that you get in um, six point one a. We are going to do six point one b. The only difference between 61A and 61B is that in 6.1B, we're going to find the greatest common factor of a polynomial. Now, polynomial meaning that a polynomial could be a monomial, could be a binomial, could be a trinomial, or could be just a polynomial. Now, you all know what those terms mean, right? Yes. Okay. So if we have something that looks like 8x cubed minus 14x squared plus 10x. Wouldn't you just split them up? And I want to know what I can pull out of there. So we're going to look at each thing separately. 8, 14, and 10. What's in common between 8, 14, and 10? A 2? Okay. Then if I look at my variables, x cubed, x squared, and an x, what can I pull out? An x. Everybody got that? Can I pull out an x? Okay. But we're not done yet because now we're going to go back in and we're going to say what happens when I pull or take this thing out of each of these. Because now what we're to is we're back to a method that we used in chapter 5 which was in division, which was 5.7a. So basically, we're looking at that and saying, if I divide 2x into 8x cubed, and I divide 2x into a negative 14x squared, and I divide 2x into 10x, what do I get? Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4. x cubed and an x gives me? x squared. Mm -hmm. Negative 14 divided by 2. And x squared and x. Mm -hmm. And 10 divided by 2. And an x divided by an x. Is gone. Okay? This is your answer. Okay? Because we have factored it and we pulled it back apart. This is stuff we did in 5.5 when I multiplied a monomial times a trinomial. We're just reversing it, and we're taking it and pulling it back apart see, to see what we come up with. I used the FOIL method last time. They didn't just tell me that you could divide everything. By we one. will still use FOIL. Well, You're just getting the beginning part of this. right? Okay. We still are going to go back and do that part. Um, so how about a negative 2a to the fourth plus 10a squared minus 4a? <clears throat> We can get a 2 out of each of those, right? And we can pull out an A. Now, the thing you need to watch is if the polynomial has a lead variable or a lead uh, coefficient of a negative value, remove a negative. So really, instead of removing a positive 2, I'm going to remove a negative 2. Mm -hmm. Because it starts out negative. So the lead meaning that this is the lead coefficient, and because it's a negative, I'm going to pull out a 
negative. Okay, so, so what happens now? Well, I have a negative 2a to the fourth over a negative 2a plus 10a squared over a negative 2a minus 4a over a negative 2a. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So then what happens? What am I left with? Negative 2a divided by negative 2a is 1. Is one. A to the fourth and an A. A to the, uh, to the third. Mm-hmm. Ten, negative two. Negative five. Uh-huh. A squared and A. And two. Two. Just two. Plus two is positive two. Okay, and my A's cancel. That's what it factors to. So you're looking for that common, greatest common factor that you end up pulling out of there in order to make it work and to make it come together. Um, let's see. Negative 26x minus 13xy squared minus 26x squared. What can I pull out of there? I can't pull a negative 2 out because a negative 2 doesn't go to 13, right? But I can pull out a 13. Mm -hmm. What kind of 13? Negative. negative. Okay. Now, what about my variables? X, X, and an X squared. Just pull out an X. No Y, a Y squared, and no Y. So I can't pull any Ys, correct? So what do I have? Oh, there's no, there's no y, y here and there's no y there. Remember, the variable has to be in everybody to pull them out. But there's no y here, a y squared here, and no y there. So therefore, I have to make sure that I, that what I have pulling out of there. So I can't pull out a y. So negative 26 divided by a negative 13? 2. x and x? Gone. Negative 13 divided by negative 13? B, uh, one. As a plus, right? X and X are gone, but what's y left? Y squared. Mm -hmm. And last, negative 26 divided by negative 13? Plus 2. Mm -hmm. And an X. And an X. Perfect. Oh, that's not good. Yep. So you've got that division type of thing going on in there, okay? Of what you can pull out and so forth. Um, what other one do I want to do? Um, 9x plus 15x y cubed minus 39y. A 3, okay. Can I take any variables? No, nope. x here, x here, but no x there. No y here, a y there, and a y there, so I can't do anything else. So my final answer, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3x. 15 divided by 3? 5x. Mm -hmm. And last? 13. Y. Okay, I think we're good. Are we? Another one? All right. Yes. Because my x is here, okay? My x is here, but I have no x here. Okay. <laughs> the variables have to be in every single piece to pull it out. Okay. Okay? Yeah, it has to be in, in every part of it if you're going to pull anything out. Another one. Negative 3xy cubed minus 6x squared y uh, minus 33x cubed y squared. What about that one? Negative 3. And you said an x. And a y. And a y. Mm -hmm. Because it's part of everything, so then what do I end up with for an answer? Y squared minus 
What? Careful, careful, careful. What's wrong with this one that you just told me? Well, what's wrong with it? It's got a problem. Positive. Positive, yeah, because when you take a negative 6 divided by negative 3, you're going to get a positive value. So be careful with signs. Negative 33 divided by a negative 3. Mm-hmm. And you can double check them if you want. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. X, Y times Y squared is Y cubed. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. X times X is an X squared with a Y. And last, a negative 3 times 11 is a negative 33. X times X squared is X cubed. And Y times Y is Y squared. So we know we ended up getting all of our answers in the correct spots. I'm with those. Okay. Need to do another one or are you guys all right? What do you think? One more. One more? Okay. Um, 15x to the third y minus 25x to the fourth y squared plus 35x to the third y squared. What can come out of this thing? Numerically, what's about my numbers? Five. A five? X and a y. Just an x? An x. Yes, x cubed. x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the third. So I've got to the third is my smallest one I have, so I can put on x3. Is it one? Y, y, y squared and a y squared? Y. Just a y. Mm -hmm. And what am I left with? Three y. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's the last one? Plus Do I have an X? No, just Y. Just Y. Oh, yeah, there's no Y here either. Sorry. Yep, I'm listening to what you're saying and not paying attention to myself. Yeah, there's no Y, because this is a Y and a Y. You're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look good. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yep, no Y out there. Alrighty, so that is those um, sections um, that we've got.